My name is Kukule Tutele and I'm traveling the African continent in search of up and coming entrepreneurs who are making a difference in their own communities. This is what giving back is all about. This is profit with purpose. This is Shiva's win the right way. From helping his family sell fireworks in support of their entrepreneurial efforts to making his own explosive entry into the world of business, Khe Tangwenga is the managing director and co-founder of School Media, an initiative which aims to connect large corporate brands to communicate their messages to various communities through school groups in South Africa. This also leads to a positive impact into the educational institutions which receive additional funding and support from this culture. We caught up with Kreta on the streets of Johannesburg to find out what his vision of shared success entails. Well, we're in conversation with Kreta Nguyenya. Such a pleasure to have you with us uh, today, sir. Founder and CEO of School Media. You've certainly been shaking things up in the South African uh, education sphere as an entrepreneur. But let's take two steps back to actually unpack uh, your journey into entrepreneurship and where it all started. So I started um, business at a young age. Well, I used to go to work with my aunt in Dobsonville. There she owned a store where we sold fireworks um, uh, in December holidays. Uh, but throughout the year it was hair products and we had phones, um, public phones where people could uh, call. Um, and people were able to do, also do photocopy machines and that. So while she used to sell um, some of the hair, the hair pieces or the hair products, then I used to help with the photocopy machines and I really used to enjoy doing that. And then at the end of the day, we used to then count how much the store actually made. And that was the best part. And um, it was quite good to, st I learned uh, when it was a good day, my aunt was happy. Um, and we went home, you know, and she could buy extra things. And if it was a bad day, she wasn't uh, too happy, you know. Counting the money must have been fun because that's where you get your cut, right? Yeah, Especially after no, a profitable day. It is, you know, for me it was, um, I didn't even think about it like that at that time. Um, it was, you know, the business making m money. So you certainly learned a lot from your explosive entry into entrepreneurship and the pun is intended there. But give us a sense of uh, some of the learnings that you obviously acquired, not only from pr driving productivity within the organization, trying to get customers to buy, but essentially how this offered shared value to the community and the society that you were serving. So the one year I then um, asked if I could run a fire, the fireworks store because um, we sold firecrackers in December and it was outside of the shop. And then I then um, borrowed money from my mom, and um, then we went and bought, bought the fireworks there. And um, just that's when I really felt um, that I was very young at that time. Uh, that's when I felt okay, I'm actually doing my own thing now. And um, from there onwards, I actually made a lot of money. Um, we turned over just over ten thousand rand. From there, I didn't want to uh, go to school or, I mean, to study. And uh, yeah, that's. I guess where it really started. Talk to us about um, School Media, uh, quite a strong initiative that you also founded in partnership with some of your peers in the industry, but give us a sense of what it actually is that you do and how you are changing things in the education sphere. Why I started School Media, number one, is to get the right information to the youth um, and then also at the same time to get brands um, to be able to communicate to the youth. Um, so getting information to the youth, you need to, someone has to pay for it at the end of the day. So that was getting it through brands. So um, in, we've been able to do safety campaigns with brands in schools, actually. So the brand is able to inform the learners and then part of the revenue goes back to help uplift the schools. We don't give the schools cash, um, we give them a catalogue. Uh, we have six metres by two metre frames and A0 frames in the schools, corridors. Um, and clients are able to book that space if they've got uh, campaigns. Where did this idea actually come from? I was part of an organisation called Young Entrepreneurs of Soweto and uh, there I learned a lot about how to formally actually run a, uh, run a business, not only run a business, what you need to have um, to formally be an established business. So your uh, company registration, um, where do you do a trademark, you know, um, basic things and also just doing also practical social initiatives. And you learned this at quite a young age, right? Yeah, I was in high school when, when I was doing that. And I was also able to, to do proposals, like I had an idea of turning pick and pays into spaza shops. And through Soweto Business Executive Chamber, I was actually able to 
contact the marketing director directly and actually pitch it to them. And uh, so from that age, I actually learned to get responses and actually see how things work. So um, I then wanted to start an organisation where I could actually maximise. It's not only limited to a few to a few learners, but to get information across to to, to more youth. Across. And uh, in the first place, it was in schools. It obviously seems as though there's a full-on value chain of uh, shared success, shared communication, uh, and uh, installation of um, really trying to re meet a common goal for everybody. Why is that important for you in your organisation, other than just driving a profit? Yeah, I guess for me. Um, when I ran my business, when I start my business, it's not only just about my success, but it's also about the success of the country and just uh, being able to contribute and getting people to collaborate on, on things. I mean, um, what I'm doing is something basic that um, the education department or could be doing, could have done uh, years ago. But, um, and were they receptive to your ideas, by the way? Yeah, they, they, we were quite they supportive of our initiatives. Um, the Minister of Education uh, is aware of us and and she's very happy with the work we're doing and the various MECs. So we, we really have the support and they understand what we do and they understand which part they play. And we work with the, obviously the school governing bodies. Um, so through the National Association of School Governing Bodies, we've got access to 9,000 schools across the country. From this, a wall that was empty, um, they're able to actually get, uh, you know, rakes, trees, you know, for the school. So it's really an opportunity to actually create, to actually develop the schools at the same time three brands, yeah. Now the advertising and billboards game is a tough one. It's far from easy going. It takes a very strong and specific type of gentleman to run a media company that specializes in school billboards and advertising. We popped into Kheti's home to pay a visit and chat about his personal likes. Kheti, we're in your personal space, your home, uh, your home away from home that you've obviously managed to establish. And uh, looking around at some of the books that you read, it's uh, quite obvious that you are not only are an avid reader, but you really do pay attention to leadership and uh, the development of several economies across the globe. Why is that important to you as an entrepreneur? Well, I guess I've always seen myself as a leader. Um, and wherever I go, I end up in a leadership position. That's why I started a business because it's tough for me to be in an environment where I, where I don't lead. Um, and it's a, it's a natural thing for me, so I always enjoy reading about different leaders and seeing what experiences they've been through and how um, societies have changed, how economies have changed. That's what really interests me because uh, that's where the opportunities lie and you can see when history repeats itself and you know which way to go as a leader and not to mislead people. Let's bring it closer to home. I mean, you've uh, obviously been led by a few influential people in your life. Uh, your aunt is one of those that really sticks out quite prominently in your story, but who else has been an example of strong, capable, and good quality leadership skills in, in your family and in your inner circle? My parents um, have always been very supportive, um, except my father, he, he would be very educational. He's pessimistic sometimes. So he's uh, the guy who wants more than just the matric. Yeah, he always <laughs> wants more than just the matric, and my mom's more positive. So it's very, it's a very balanced. They have a very balanced relationship, so which actually molded me. And also learning from my um, parents' background um, and experiences, what we've grown up with in the household. So that's what shaped me because my father is an activist, and my and my mother's uh, uh, an employee. So. Um, it's two different, uh, two different dynamics. My mom's employed for a business and my dad's an activist. So mm. my dad's more of a leadership and more like, a, you know, uh, you know, go, 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 against, against, against. You know, he's always for change. So, and then my mom on the other side, she's always, always reading. Well, they both um, always encouraged reading. On a Sunday, we'd, I'd buy four different newspapers. Yeah. I'd have to, because I always wake up before everyone. So before I go wake, when I get, go to their room, then they chase me out. They say, go buy a <laughs> newspaper. So let's fast track then to the 45-year-old you. Um, where do you see yourself by the time you're 45 from a family point of view, from a business point of view, and still carrying on with the ethos of doing things the Shivers way, which mm. is managing to achieve shared success? Probably moving out of here. Um, I think I would have had a good time in this place uh, by then. Um, and moving on to a bigger place and uh, then starting to, to have a family. I see myself 
yeah, being able to afford more shivers. <laughs> 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 and um, the eighty—it's uh, the eighteen-year-old day. Eh? It's that you have the shivers, yeah. And there's extra. The, the extra, yeah. If I can afford that and have a bar of shivers one day, and then it's also success in my home if if those things are there and I can afford them. Every company has a base. We travelled in traffic to visit Kheti at his place of work to find out what makes the company's lifeblood flow. Kheti, we're in your office space, quite a dynamic environment where you have to cultivate all the creative juices to get flowing. Tell us a little bit more about this environment and um, how it actually helps you run the operation, being school media. So we moved in here about uh, three, four months ago. Um, and the reason for the move is that we wanted to be closer to our clients. And we also wanted a space where we can um, feel more youthful and it can be, um, as you can see, young. We have play music throughout the day just so that uh, we don't have such a serious um, culture at the same time mm. because at the same we are dealing with a youth so we never want to turn a blind eye to that we do have our formal side like you see me today uh, which i don't uh, <laughs> all for tv huh? all for <laughs> <laughs> hey yeah um, so there's always a time and place and yeah it's always a time and place to as long as you're getting your work done mm. um, the environment is relaxed and it's conducive for that. Talk to us about how you actually recruit some of your staff members and what it is with regard to that je ne sais quoi that you look out for to make sure that they are individuals who can actually contribute quite positively to the school media initiative. We sometimes use recruitment agencies and then uh, we sometimes go out and with the guys that we've already worked before we ask them to refer people on uh, because um, sometimes you interview uh, candidates and it's not uh, all the time what you get. Um, so. We always um, recruit based on performance. So most of the most of the time, whoever's worked, whoever is still working here, has started on a part-time basis and then moved on onto a full-time basis. Tying back into the shared vision, you mentioned that you recruit um, and your staff complement is made up of fairly young, dynamic, creative sure. individuals. However, you're dealing with very serious <coughs> corporate clients. How do you bridge the gap there uh, in how you communicate to both these individuals to 100%. really relay your message quite strongly? We've got two clients as a business. Uh, one is our schools, um, so we have to have people representing us at the schools and also representing the brands at the schools. Then we have obviously our corporate clients that buy the space, um, which um, in most cases it's myself and uh, Jared that deal with those with those clients, the government and corporate client. Then um, mainly the schools is our biggest number of clients because that's who we service. The staff that you actually employ, keeping them on board and allowing them to also buy into the vision that you're looking to share and develop. How has that been, uh, not only from an internal perspective with staff, but also with your external clients, um, to make sure that not only do they hook on once, but that there's sustainability behind the operations that you run? I need to f always focus on uh, keeping the vision going. And I guess um, for a small organization, things always change fast. The team always knows that we have to we, all, we can't always just be saying, oh, this is all I'm doing. You know, you have to be able to kind of multi, do kind, kind of number of things at the, at the same time. Exactly. If we look at the demographic of the individual that you um, typically employ, they're young, they're dynamic, and they're very creative. And that probably speaks to the similar statistics we see across the African continent. 75% yeah. of our population is made up of youth under the age of 35, and unfortunately, majority of them unemployed. Given that you run such a youthful organization, yeah. Uh, are there typical challenges that maybe you've experienced with dealing with slightly more mature yes. <laughs> leaders and uh, you know trying to show your dynamism as well as your seriousness in the execution of your skills? I guess uh, I, I'd like to believe I'm young myself so um, dealing with other young pe peers it's almost they you almost the same age mm -hmm. so it's um, kind of difficult sometimes so there is an element of uh, where I do get Older, there is guys that are a bit older, so that there is that form of um, respect. You know, it, it does create a balance. At first, I used to think, no, it's just young people. We're gonna do this, and yeah. and uh, so really, it's just to try and keep that stability, and not just it's not only just about having young people, but it's always trying to have people with experience. What do you believe? It is that we need to do as society, as government, as representatives of corporate South Africa, in order to really cultivate a culture of entrepreneurship within our youth. I mean, education is very important. People need to start understanding that you don't have to finish matric. You can finish school up to grade nine 
and then either go to a college or start a business. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess um, education's always been something that everybody wants wants you to see. You. I mean, that's how people measure success in in a in, in a lot of societies. So. If success wasn't measured based on being an educated person um, and really success being based on that you are able to live and you're able to survive, I guess um, then skills like entrepreneurship would be more encouraged um, because right now you can't really encourage entrepreneurship because people are scared they're going to go into debt or mm. it's got such a almost a bad connotation. I mean when I left school and I said I want to start a business, my dad told me, I, you know, you crazy, go study, you know, I can afford to take you to school now. Wow. So you can, you need to go study and I was like, I can't, I, I'll rather take a gap here then. You know, I, I almost I ended up not telling them I'm starting my own business because he was just like this, I just said I'm taking a gap here, you know, and my mom was very supportive of um, my entrepreneurship journey. She always gave me books and that. So it's really, I read from the background, my mom gave me books, so that that helped me. So I guess if we if more stories are told um, to youth mm -hmm. about entrepreneurship, that and seeing that it's not only you have to be educated because some people want to go study and start a business, but it's not the same. Starting a business is buying even peanuts and selling uh, on the street. That's an entrepreneur. Yeah. If you sell cigarettes, if you find uh, opportunity, even in your workplace to provide lunch for people, it's an opportunity, so. When you engage with other entrepreneurs, given that you've um, been part of the mm -hmm. World Economic Forum, Young Global Shapers uh, uh, Society, what kind of insights have you received from some of your peers as to how you can not only boost your business, but make sure that the value proposition that you offer is one that speaks to shared success? So how is that interaction from a World Economic Forum Young Global Shaper perspective actually help contribute not only to your own leadership skills, but to the running of your organization? I mean, being part of the World Economic Forum, it's a good opportunity. Um, I mean, right now we stay stakeholders on the Internet for All um, our campaign. Yes. Um, so from a Global Shaper side, uh, I sit as a Global Shaper, and then it's also given from a business side that our business can actually, because the schools that we work with are rural areas, and that's where the opportunity is that those schools need to be educated about the internet mm -hmm. and, and learn how to use the internet for good purposes. Because I mean, some of the research that has been shown is that um, some people, when they do case studies, they ask, do you use Facebook? Someone would say yes, and, and ask them, do you use in the internet? And they would say no. So it's, mm. quite, uh, it's quite a different, so people, the understanding of what internet is, it's quite, it's quite different. So I've been able to get exposure to a lot of that and also a lot of stakeholders and then just also seeing how, what the kind of trends that are happening yeah. uh, within society because of the experienced people that are around me. Um, and from my side, I haven't went to a higher, edu uh, higher education. I finished school matric and then I started a business. So I'm not, I didn't go into a college where I met friends that are in me within the industry mm. and then I went to work in an organization that does media. I just started everything uh, from scratch. So it's building those relationship and I guess that platform has helped me to be able to access more uh, context to grow the vision of the business. So we're here on location at one of the schools that you've actually worked with here in Deep Bluefin Soweto. Give us an understanding as to how the relationship with this particular school came about though. Sure, so this is uh, one school out of the 9,000 schools of our network um, in partnership with the National Association of School Governing Bodies. So whenever before we work on campaigns they usually put us on uh, to schools and this was one of the first schools that they actually um, put us in touch with. And they were so participant, they were so active that when we did a campaign with them, with Adidas, they were one of the winning schools. So they actually had a oh. whole Orlando Pirates team come here and visit them as well. That must have caused some chaos. <laughs> yeah, it did, it did. And it also built our relationship. That's why we grew closer to the school. So a lot of opportunities and things that come about, we always work with them because they're always so enthusiastic to do things. 
Sounds with like us. it certainly worked in your favor, and we're actually walking past one of the brandings that you also have here on the premises. But give us a sense of an understanding as to how you actually deploy the branding on the premises. So there's several walls with banners and boards that you use. How do you spot the location? How do you make sure it's the right brand being represented? And making sure that your messaging is also quite clear to the students. Yes, so we always put branding wear around where the kids um, play. Um, so we usually, during break, before we put material up, we look around where do the kids play. And also just get a bit of direction from um, the headmaster or whichever teacher is relevant to the topic. If it's about safety, it could be a life orientation teacher or it could be a sports teacher when it's a leaders campaign. Um, so then they always direct us and then we use various materials. Dependent on the client, it could be PVC material. Um, and it could also be murals like you saw on the sign earlier at mm -hmm. uh, the school media sign. So it's a mixture of both paint, just dependent on what the client wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of the client and the kind of feedback that you've obviously received given the murals and the, the paintings that you have on uh, these walls, uh, how many clients just keep coming back for more given the positive response that they get from the students? Because they're really actually tapping into a target audience that is still going to grow, still going to get jobs and uh, essentially they kind of get them while they're still young. Young, yeah, 100%. So, I mean, once you go to school media, you never go back. So, <laughs> <laughs> all our clients, we've been with them for uh, longer than four years. And immediately when we start, it's always a relationship that we take forward. So, there's never been a client that we've worked with and it's just stopped working with them. Um, it's always a continuous relationship throughout. Mm -hmm. Is there a sense of fulfillment for you when it comes to shared success and um, Looking at the success that you've attained so far, you know, within the school Sports. premises, were you able to shape and mold the minds of young people too? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, when I was in school, I thought of this idea when I was still in school. And uh, I'm really happy that there's more activities that brands are involved, opportunities that they didn't know about, they, they actually come to their schools. And also information that they didn't know about, it's actually at the school. So, I would have loved to have an opportunity like this because it's, um, Again, it's opportunities that went there and it's from, from where there was nothing, then there's, there's something. And also just helping to raise funds for the schools to help them with extra needs that they need to do. And the brands as well that you represent, given that uh, you are speaking to a group of individuals who are under the age of 18, we're trying to teach them about a positive lifestyle, lifestyle. Um, making healthy choices and the right decisions for their future. How selective are you with regards to the brands that you select and the communication that they also want to share with the audience? Yeah, so we do almost self-regulate ourselves and um, through our partnership with the association, before any information comes up in school, we run it past them first and then we then say um, if it's something that can come in or into the school or not. So if it is a fast food brand, uh, we wouldn't encourage them to say there's a um, store uh, two kilometers down the road coming by. It would be something that would encourage them uh, more on a sports side or more on a hygiene. Uh -huh. so, uh, so it's using the brand to bring positive messaging as well. Really, it's getting um, clients to actually believe in the idea. And uh, so the more, I think that's how I measure my, uh, my worth one day. It's, it's actually through the schools. So even when we do our turnover, we always target together. Okay, this year we're going to sell a thousand schools um, or we're going to sell 2,000 schools. Um, so that's just how we uh, market here. And we, I think we're on track. I'm happy. <laughs> I like that, that you're on track and you're happy yeah. and obviously more prospects for you to grow and develop further. What does that actually entail? Are there any plans uh, in the pipeline to conquer the rest of the continent? 100%. So we mainly now we obviously more of a in-school branding. We just uh, focused on branding uh, and providing that opportunity. So um, going forward next year, we're actually going to get into more content and uh, more on the digital side of things. Um, so we're working on a software which I will early next year show you guys, uh, pi uh, the pilots we're doing it in uh, Tembisa, in a school in Tembisa, so, which is very exciting. That's going to be more content driven and um, also creating more employment because we'll have uh, journalists that we're going to employ to actually create uh, content around the schools and it will be on a digital platform. That's, it'll be a learning tool as well, which the, schools are, the school is quite happy with that they use. 
You've also managed to pick up quite a few accolades, um, given uh, the success that uh, school media has achieved. Regardless of the awards, the prizes, and the nominations at big competitions, how do you define true success for yourself and for school media? When we, like it's I said, it's not about money in the bank right now. Uh, of course it is. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm running the business. It's, <laughs> it's about growing the, get, uh, growing the business, growing more turnover, selling more inventory. Like I was saying earlier, it's about selling those tooth. I mean, if I sell all 9,000 schools and run out of space, I, I, I'd be very, I'd be, that's how I define success. And uh, getting more schools um, on board after that um, and running out of those schools yeah. um, and marketing to more than 12 million learners, that, that would be success for me. Yeah. And what about your plans to take other people with you along on the journey as you have already shown that um, you participate in shared success and shared values. Everyone in my organization is growing um, and when the business grows, uh, everyone grows with it, you know. So if you're putting, um, if you're not lazy, you'll stay where you are. And if you, so that's how my business actually has been growing over the years is that whoever joins it actually grows their own division because there's so much uh, going on so it's and they then they enjoy it and um, and they get extra people and say look I need help with this um, so it's actually them leading that 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 role so and also just with um, the staff I mean there is an incentive of um, getting shares if you um, depending on the agreement that we have um, with with some of the staff and some of our sales guys that we have yeah but clearly big picture thinking, making sure that you have the right team members around you and like you say, really trying to serve a purpose instead of just driving profit. Kheti, we wish you nothing but the best. And as we do, doing business the Shivers way, wishing you nothing but more shared success. Cheers. Cheers.